When I became superintendent of schools in 2011, one of the priorities I set for the School District of La Crosse was for us to take a look critically at both our internal systems as well as our partnerships with external agencies to ensure that we were effectively and efficiently meeting the needs of all of our learners. As I worked with the school district's administrative team, we turned to the work of Edelman and Taylor and their book, Rebuilding for Learning, to serve as our guide. Edelman and Taylor's research is a framework to ensure that all students have the opportunity to succeed in school and have a strong start toward being productive contributors to our society, a task that the district knew they could not tackle single-handedly. So, they reached out to the Family and Youth Services Subcommittee of the City, County, and School District Collaborative, and in August of 2011, a summit was held that included more than 100 people representing over 30 youth and family services agencies. During that day-long event, educators, health, human services, and youth serving professionals discussed the challenges and needs that young people in our community face today. Out of that event came a list of priority projects as well as the development of six committees that aligned with Edelman and Taylor's content arenas. As the district's director of pupil services and learning supports, I'm excited about the initiatives these content arena subcommittees are undertaking. The Classroom-Based Approaches Committee is looking critically at classroom support for students and instructional strategies. The Support for Transitions team is looking at the programs and services available to students as they transition between grade levels, as well as when students reintegrate into their school. Logan Middle School Principal Jay Pika leads the Home Involvement and Engagement in Schooling Committee. His group is looking critically at how to improve the home-school connection. The Community Outreach for Involvement and Collaborative Support Team is identifying how the community supports learning and where gaps exist. The Crisis Assistance and Prevention Group, co-facilitated by Associate Principal John Bodick and Lieutenant Avery Schott, is working to develop and implement systems that respond to, minimize, and ultimately prevent crises in our schools. And finally, the Student and Family Assistance Committee is looking at the referral process and intervention services available for our students and what needs are not yet met. Over the course of the next year, the membership on these six committees was solidified and work on a resource website and a multi-agency release of information was developed. In August of 2012, a second summit was held. Dr. Rhonda Waltman from the Division of Community Affairs for the Rebuilding for Learning Initiative facilitated the event. The school district alone can't fix the problems with the children and we need everybody at the table. So the challenge um, for me was coming to a community where there's already buy-in, but where there are very high expectations of how we care for all children and all families. Last year, a lot of the barriers were identified to learning and institutional barriers to helping children and families. This year, uh, the district and the community have come together around what are the real goals that we want to come out of it for the students and the families that we serve, and more so, what are our next steps? Because the community realizes clearly that it takes more than just talking about our problems. It takes um, putting a framework around what we're doing and bringing our thoughts to action so that we are successful with our children and families. Dr. Troy Harsey, Associate Superintendent of Instruction for the School District of La Crosse, believes this work will have a lasting impact. The magnitude of the work that we're trying to do is, is enormous, but it's also exciting. And so with that in mind and the alignment between organizations, uh, we've, got, we've taken baby steps. We're two years into this, and I think we all have to be mindful of the fact that this is legacy work. And I don't mean for any one organization or any one person, but for our community as a whole. And we've used this trite saying before, but I believe it's to be true. Uh, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. And so we feel like we're doing something that's gonna be profound in our community for a long time to come. And we're being very, very intentional about how we approach it. The two summits, as well as the committee work, has brought organizations together to engage in critical conversations about serving youth and families that is different than that in the past. Parenting Place Executive Director Jody Wiedek. My experience is you can't really build collaboration until you know folks and you trust folks and you don't get that until you spend time with each other. So having this opportunity to be around the table with each other 
and talk about vision and dreams, hopes and dreams for our families and children. Executives from the various youth serving organizations repeatedly shared the realization of the importance for regular and ongoing communication amongst organizations. Communication, we need to make sure that all the services that we're all providing, that we're all aware of what everybody is doing. The organizations know that with better communication will come better services for the families and children we serve. There's lots of linkages that we're missing that we um, could do a better job at linking on and, I, and we're figuring out ways to do it in ways that protect the, the confidentiality of the child, the confidentiality of the parents involved, uh, uh, but at the same time um, figure out ways to help, help us mute, arrive at our mutual goals. La Crosse County Human Services Director Jason Witt agrees. What this project has is spurred regular and constant uh, communication about those services and really, uh, especially since the first uh, summit, rolling up our sleeves and doing the hard work in terms of how we can improve our, our coordination of, of services and address barriers, uh, particularly in the legal realm where it's important where we're sharing information, uh, but also how our staff are communicating on a regular, regular basis. In addition to developing systems to better communicate amongst staff, the Rebuilding for Learning project under the leadership of La Crosse County Community Development Educator Carl Green has created an annual student survey to collect data on issues affecting La Crosse's youth. Continually ask without inundating them with surveys, obviously, but um, and so uh, I guess with, in regards to student surveys, continuing to get their feedback uh, and get data um, together so that we see what are some common issues. The survey's results have guided the work of school counselors and area youth serving organizations. The Rebuilding for Learning initiative has also served as a catalyst for other community projects aimed to improve the city and better serve families. We've now got a full-blown uh, neighborhood revitalization commission with three council members on it. Um, citizen activists, just some members at large, and they've kind of gone through their own little kind of strategic planning process, what their goals are for neighborhood revitalization. So that's really exciting. The commission has identified the following priorities in an effort to improve neighborhoods. Community building, infrastructure, housing, crime prevention and public safety, and code enforcement. City Councilwoman Sarah Sullivan chairs the city's Neighborhood Revitalization Commission. She believes that creating family-friendly neighborhoods is important for both the city and the school district. I think neighborhoods very core are founded in young families with children. Now, you don't have to have every house filled with a young family, but you know, sort of the combination of older residents and young families, and families are not gonna wanna live in neighborhoods unless there's a good school that's available to them for their children. After two years, the Rebuilding for Learning partners have made great strides and have much to be proud of. And yet, there is a great deal of work yet to be done. Our goal is sustainability. And so to do that, we've been working on a common agenda. We've been working on mutually reinforcing activities. We've been working on uh, those kinds of metrics that we can measure across organizations. And that's daunting work. But the city, county, school district, and private organization partners remain committed. They have high hopes for what this collaboration could mean to students and families in the school district of La Crosse. I hope we're looking more like one system, uh, that it's more of an invisible system to the, the children that we serve, that they're not seeing the boundary, well this is where social services ends and this is where school services uh, begin and this is where community services start, uh, that it looks like one integrated uh, system uh, to, to that child in terms of uh, one team that's on the same page uh, trying, trying to help. So I, I hope we, we get there and I think we're making, making great strides to, to do that. I'd like to see five years from now every neighborhood in the city having it such that anybody would want to live there and then people just saying we want to live in this education community. <laughs>